Hi folks, welcome to the session Mohit the site. So in this session, we'll be seeing how we can make use of Salesforce APIs. So we'll see how we can generate access token in Salesforce and use the same for creating a case or updating a task or whatever in Salesforce. So what you can see in the screen is a plain vanilla version of Salesforce. It supports a REST API and it supports OAuth authentication. So uh, the first step would be to generate or obtain credentials like client ID or client secret for uh, REST API. So let's go to the Salesforce instance. So as I said, this is the plain vanilla instance. I haven't done any configuration over it. So let's start, start with the first step. So to create client ID and client secret, what we have to do is we have to go to apps set up home page go to apps and you can see something like app manager here click on that and you will reach this page where you can create new connected app so let's create one connected app so let me name it as demo application I'll give my email ID as contact. So let's ignore all those stuff. So you can add if, if it's important for you. And so we are using this app for basically for connecting or creating a third party API. So enable all settings. So if you have a callback URL, you can update that. Otherwise use the uh, default Salesforce API and uh, give permission. So the minimum permission you need is access and manage your API. So this should be the minimum per permission you need to uh, start with the APIs. Provide access to data via web and I'm giving full access just in case this is my trial version. I can do anything I want. So there are a lot of options to interest, introspect uh, all tokens or enable asset tokens and uh, adding web URLs and a lo lot of stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, you can go ahead with this and add if it's important to you. Uh, what we are looking in this demo would be the basic uh, necessities to create an API. So I have created an app demo application, enabled OAuth settings and selected the OAuth scope. So uh, full access will give access to everything. So I selected that. Now, if I save the setting and continue, I can see my app here. So there you go. I have client ID and client secret generated here with uh, the redirect URL. So we can just see if uh, everything is there as we have selected. Yes. Now let's go to Postman. Uh, so to create or to access the token, generate access token from Salesforce, what you have to do is there is a URL for that. Uh, Salesforce instance slash services OAuth to token. So this is the uh, basic URL to generate or obtain the access token. So we'll be using a post command to send the request to Salesforce URL and uh, generate the access token. So if you are new to Postman, I have another video for Postman. You can uh, subscribe or look into my channel for uh, Postman videos. So let's start with the uh, parameters all we want. We need uh, grant type. It should be password, username and password and client ID and client secret. So uh, authorization code grant type is also supported, but for the reason as we use grant type as password. So we already have client ID and client secret from the Salesforce instance. Let's copy it and paste it here. There you go. So this is my client ID and copy the client secret. Cool. 
So we have client ID and client secret, which is copied here, and we are all set to send the request. So as I said, uh, this is a new service, now, a Salesforce instance, and this is not configured. So there are a couple of other things we also need to do before uh, sending the request. So what you have to go is next step, uh, go to manage connected app. So we have created a connected app. Uh, we have generated consumer key and consumer secret, basically client client ID and client secret. We have selected the OAuth scopes and we have enabled the device flow with a callback URL. So the next step, go to the manage connected app. So this is our application, demo application. And edit policies and relax IP restriction. So you can actually add IP restriction for activated device like you can activate your device and relax IP restrictions for uh, those calls. But here I am relaxing IP restrictions for all the uh, calls. So otherwise my uh, REST API will give an unauthorized error because the IP is not authorized. Once this is done, we can go back to identity verification and check or uncheck the things which are required for us. Go to the security level policies and uh, make sure it adheres with our companies or personal security policies. So once we are done with uh, these three steps like uh, creating an app, relaxing the IP, rela IP relaxations and uh, identifying the verifications, let's Go to Salesforce, I mean Postman, and send a request to Salesforce instance slash service slash OAuth2 slash token, followed by the parameters. So we have nothing else uh, to be sent. All the authorization mechanism is sent directly here. So let's send the request. Ooh, we have the access token generated. So now we can use this access token. Let's create a case with this access token. So to create the case, the so Salesforce URL will be Salesforce instance slash services slash data slash Salesforce app version slash S object slash case. So this will create new objects or new entries in the case table. So let's send a request uh, to create new case. So we have our authorization token, which was generated in our previous step. So we have already generated the authorization token, uh, added it here. So the content type is JSON. And let me go to the demo. So let's create a case. So these are the mandatory fields for case, creating a case. Let's do the subject. Let's see if this is captured in case. Nice subject line. Let's see if this is captured in case. So this is basically the HTML bo uh, JSON body for um, all the attributes or columns in case. So whatever you want to fill in, man, make sure mandatory fields are filled. Fill in the details, add the authorization token, and send the request to salesforce.com slash services slash data slash version as subject case, because we are creating a new case. If it was task, it would be task. So on click of send, I guess a new case should have been created with this ID in our Salesforce instance. Let's go and check. So let me go to our Salesforce instance and let me see if a new case is created. Yep, a new case is created. Let's see if this is captured in case. Yeah, so created just now with the ID GJAAF. Let's verify that here. Yeah, G J A A A F. So the ID is same. 
a new case is created with uh, whatever details we have uh, submitted like web requested by case number and the subject so whatever has been captured uh, whatever has been passed is captured similarly you can fill in all the details in the json form here uh, and with just one single click case can be created so this web service can be integrated with any of your uh, third party or in-house tools like ServiceNow or your in-house web application so that cases can be created or updated automatically. Check it out and let me know if you have any queries or suggestions. Thank you. Bye-bye.